that might be trying to ascend into November here. Well, look, they're a six and two football team with a really good defense, some young players that are playing well for them. Julian Gray, one of the best kickoff return guys in the country, will wave for the fair catch. Miami pinned him to the far side. And here comes the Wolfpack with MJ Morris making his sixth career start. But when you talk about NC State, and we talked about Reuben Bain, Tim, we're going to get a look tonight at maybe the leading candidate for the ACC Offensive Rookie of the Year in KC Concepcion. Concepcion is a really special player, and, you know, MJ Morris is tasked with getting him the football, and they try to do it every way they can. In the backfield, play him in the slot, the play, you know, give him on reverses, anything they can do to give 10 the football. Concepcion is in the backfield, sidecar right of Morris. You see Jordan Poole with him, and this is Concepcion picking up almost four. Last week, he had two explosives in the ground game. The last three games, Tim, seven carries for 90 yards and 19 catches for nearly 250 and four touchdowns. And normally when somebody is basically the focal point of your offense, he's an experienced player that's been in the system for a while. This is a true freshman that they have put a lot on his plate, and he's delivered. You see now Michael Allen wheels into the backfield. And they push, Con push Concepcion in motion. Play fake by Morris. Pressure coming, and he throws complete. This is getting to the far side. That's Allen, and he'll have an NC State first down. Robert Anai with some slick motion here, and it works out to 11 yards on the pass play. That's exactly right, Wes. A shift with Concepcion. And then a motion with him. And so here's what, you know, and so now you get the motion, you fake it to him, and now you can just slip the ball out to the back in the flat. And it's a nice, easy completion for MJ Morris. Allen stays in the backfield this time. See the Wolfpack moving guys around. That's going to be a staple tonight. Play fake. Morris trying to keep it. He'll work his way to the outside. Kiko Mane. Maui Noah, the linebacker, had a hold of him, and a flag will come down as Morris is forced out of bounds toward the 45. And MJ Morris not happy, I think, with the extra shove or two into the Miami bench on the first down play. Jerry Magalanes. Personal foul, face mask, offense number seven. 15 yard penalty, first down. Well, it's interesting, Maui Noah's got MJ Morris's arm, and I trying to figure out like where the face mask came in. I think it's initially right there. Mm. And that's when Maui Noah just says, all right, you can grab my face mask. I'm just going to go ahead and hold your arm. Mm. I think it helped draw the flag. It's actually a pretty clever move by Maui Noah. There's Kiko, one of the top tacklers on Miami's defense. James Williams, the safety, also among that group. You'll see him tonight, the 6'5", native of Fort Lauderdale. After the penalty now, the Wolfpack backed up. First and 25, Miami brings four. Morris shoots it, almost picked off by Kitchens. The safety made a dive on a ball intended for Concepcion. And, you know, NC State, they bring Concepcion out of the backfield, and they run a little option route with him, and MJ Morris just stares it down. And I'm going to tell you right now, with what Concepcion has done, Miami is going to do plenty where they have a lot of eyeballs on number 10. Yep. And so you've got to be careful. You've got to see out in front because oftentimes there'll be a double. Kendrick Raphael is in the backfield. And Brennan Armstrong. Look at this. Here's Armstrong taking the snap, direct snap from Brennan to Brennan Armstrong. And he plows across the 30 to the 31. Cloyd, the linebacker, makes the play after six. So our first look at the former starter, Brennan Armstrong. who ran for 286 yards prior to the carry there. And Morris has come back in. And, Tim, I'm not going to be surprised if we see seven and five together tonight. No, and Robert and I has a history of doing things like this. Somebody who's a good football player, not just a good quarterback, a good football player, just finding other ways to use him, obviously, there. Kind of a wildcat look. Third down and very long for the Wolfpack. Morris shoots it to Concepcion. He'll step out of bounds across the way ahead of Jaden Davis. And NC State will be forced to punt. Penalty really sidetracked the Wolfpack. And we'll get our first look tonight at the punter, Noonkester. And Restrepo 
will be deep to return the punt. He wears 37 because there's another number seven on the field for the punt return unit of Miami. So this is Xavier Restrepo, also very dangerous in the offensive set for Cristobal's team. And Restrepo inside the 20 at the 18. First guy missed, and he'll be pulled down shy of the 30 into the Hurricane bench. So about three minutes gone. Opening period. Xavier will change costumes. He'll Next exchange they had this week on Tuesday night. Both of them were working late in their respective offices. Right. Gibson texted Dawson, hey, I'm trying to script them some things. Tell me what you're doing so I can go home. Dawson wrote back, yeah, I'll send you the game plan if you don't play 11, a.k.a. Peyton Wilson. So a lighthearted moment between the good friends going head to head here tonight. It is a small world, Taylor, and these are two genuinely Terrific people and really good football coaches. And on cue, there's the star of last Saturday's win over Virginia. And that is Mark Fletcher, the freshman from Fort Lauderdale, tackled by Scott and Boykin from the Wolfpack second and third levels. Second down and five. Van Dyke, quick throw to the perimeter. Fletcher again, and he is helped out of bounds by Shaheen Battle. It'll be third and short, and Tyler Van Dyke. Tim is 5-0 and this year when he attempts 30 or fewer passes in a game. Yeah, I do think Miami wants to run the football first. Van Dyke's an experienced player. He's had his moments where he's been great. He's also kind of found himself making some decisions that have hurt his football team at time. I think part of that was coming off the injury last week. They say he feels better and gets an opportunity here now on a very third manageable. Three picks against Georgia Tech, two to Carolina, two to Virginia. Van Dyke, third and short, handed straight to Fletcher. Whoa! What a collision, and Fletcher breaks free for the first down. What a collision right at the line of scrimmage. Devon, Betty, and Fletcher collided and the young man kept his legs going and Fletcher goes about six foot two he kind of runs a vertical you know and even though he was standing straight up and takes that big shot really behind the line of scrimmage like Sean Brown in there as well and next thing you know just able to muscle through what a run by Fletcher caught a pass on a good hard run Here's Van Dyke on a straight drop, going to loop it down the far sideline and incomplete. Trying to go to 6'5", Colby Young. And battle in coverage for the Wolfpack. And Shaheen battles one-on-one -on -one coverage and gets a great jam. Just look at the jam that he gets. Looks like it's going to be a double move in that jam. It kind of just threw off the timing a little bit. Pretty good ball by Tyler Van Dyke, but... Colby Young, who's six foot five, not able to come down with that. That's a pretty good matchup on the perimeter tonight, right? It, it is. Yep. Single receiver to the field here for Miami on second and ten. Van Dyke, quick throw on the perimeter. And moving through traffic is Colby Young. He'll have a first down into NC State territory. So not Jacoby George. Not Brashard Smith, but Colby Young here early tonight. Yeah, and a wide receiver screen with as aggressive as NC State typically is, where, you know, they're going to bring a lot of pressure. And oftentimes from the secondary, I would not be surprised to see a heavy dose of some of these perimeter screens in hopes that you just catch them one time and are able to hit it big. Here is Fletcher again, banging straight away to the 42 of NC State. So, Brandon Cleveland, the tackle, but Tim, the concern here would be for Tony Gibson. Miami's gotten a run game going here a little bit over this opening drop. Yeah, and that last play there, two tight ends in the game, same personnel group, and you line up with two tight ends, yep. and I make this front declare and, you know, basically challenge them. You want to play with three defensive linemen, we're going to put two tight ends in the game and really try to run the football in. Two tights to the top this time. McCormick and Williams. You see the receivers to the bottom of the screen. On second and five. Van Dyke hit as he throws, launches it up, and it's almost intercepted by Aiden White. Listen, there's a pressure that comes to Van Dyke's 
Right, and he basically, he go, we got pressure coming from here and here. And so Van Dyke wants to get rid of this football quickly, but I just don't know if there's a miscommunication with what he thought his receivers were gonna do because Restrepo just hooked up, and then his outside receiver didn't run deep either, and he's fortunate that ball wasn't intercepted. So third and five. And, and West kind of in no man's land here. Third and five in your team that likes to run the football, you know, you get some of it, you may be going for it on fourth down. Going to hand the ball to Fletcher, heads for the perimeter, cuts back, gets the first down. Wilson will make the tackle at the 35 along with Battle. It's really well blocked by Miami up front. It's just a split zone. You see McCormick coming across the formation. That's the split action. That's zone blocking everywhere else. And just that misdirection and then that big of a back coming downhill. It's well blocked up front. And Fletcher is off to a pretty good start. Here's the first and 10. And again, those two tights booing Miami's run game here early on this opening drive. Quick throw on the perimeter, Restrepo, and ruled incomplete. Quick whistle will make it second and 10. 10th play of the drive coming up for Miami here in plus territory. And if Tony Gibson and Shannon Dawson were friends, I, like, you'd hate to see what Tony Gibson would do to an enemy. Listen, there's a couple times now, he's just bringing it like, like in, from the field in his face. I mean, he's coming after him right away early. And maybe it's, hey, look, I'm going to show him all this pressure early and play soft later because he knows me well, but certainly been a, an aggressive start for NC State defensively. Give again. And inside, Davin Van was trying to rip it out. Could not. Fletcher carries it to the 30. They're clearly in the range of Borgalis as you see Fletcher go out and Henry Parrish check in for Miami. You know, the guy that I feel like has gone a little quiet for Miami is Xavier Restrepo. Yeah. Does such a good job running option routes, just finding the hole in the zone. Does a good job of just using his body to get open. A little surprising, he's not on the field on this third down. Miami's third in the ACC on third down. They are 43% in conference play. Here's Van Dyke wanting to throw back across the middle and incomplete. Intended for Cam McCormick. Peyton Wilson spun him around as the ball arrived to force the incompletion. And now Borgalis will come on to try and put Miami on the board. It's a really good job by Peyton Wilson. They run a mesh concept. Look at how it just gets passed off. Shallow crosses coming from both directions. And they do a good job of communicating underneath. You know, Tony Gibson, who also coaches the linebackers, not just the defensive coordinator, got to be pleased with how that was passed off by his guys inside. 48 yards for Andres Borgales. Kick is away and good. So Miami on the opening drive moves it 12 plays and kicks a field goal. Cristobal's team in front. Team before they boarded to ride over here to Carter Finley Stadium. Last week's win against Clemson that means they've won two out of three from the Tigers, Tim, and it felt like that kind of rejuvenated and got NC State on track after a bye week because they were coming off that hard loss at Duke where nothing went well for them. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, it's kind of deflating loss, I think. Just you know, lack of offensive production and you know, playing a backup quarterback for Duke. and It's kind of how that game went, but certainly a rejuvenated team after the strong performance against Clemson. Julian Gray will take this from a yard deep 10 15 great bounced off and not be able to reach the 20. miami covered it up nicely raul aguirre jr is a reserve linebacker for mario cristobal so here's mj morris's second possession and the wolf pack from their 18. miami went 43 yards in a dozen plays borgalis the field goal for the canes The running back 
is Kendrick Raphael, and we got a procedure here. Dude. False start, offense, number 49. Five-yard penalty, first down. It's Reed Mitchell, the tight end right here, just a little bit of a flinch, and you know, it's that shift, that stem defense uh, of the defensive line, and you know, Anthony Belton's like, all right, it's all right, let's get him next time. Yeah, that's all you can say. So the old pack backed up before the first snap. There's Concepcion to the slot on the right. Miami bringing pressure. Morris shoots it, and is it intercepted? No. Kitchens couldn't come up with it. It hit the ground at the 36. Twice, number five's almost stolen one from M.J. Morris. Right, and it's not a good throw by M.J. Morris. He's got Concepcion on a seam, and it's the perfect call because you got a single high safety and you're working the scheme, seam, excuse me, but you can't bend him inside, and he bends him way inside. He's fortunate that that football wasn't intercepted, much like the other one to Cam Kitchens. See the wolf pack, two backs, Allen and Raphael, three receivers. That's Allen out of the backfield in motion. They'll hand to Kendrick Raphael, and he will work back toward the original line, and a couple more. Jared Harrison Hunt will make it third and about eight on the tackle. You know, between the penalties and, and honest, some errant throws, you know, NC State's found themselves in two brutal third downs yep. to start this football game. And, you know, we talked in the open about Reuben Bain, number 44, who's going to be lined up, you know, to MJ Morris's left. That is not somebody that you want to unwind in, in the passing game. Bain to the bottom of the formation for Miami. Here's Morris from the pocket again. Now looking, going to run with it and tried to get the first down and got blasted by James Williams, the safety. Wow. 6'5", James Williams, who's as physical as it gets, unlocked MJ Morris. Well, Williams at 6'5", he covers a lot of ground, and Morris ends up escaping outside to his right here. Looks like he may have a chance to pick up the first down, and here comes Williams, and... You no, know, he's a ball carrier, so you don't have a defenseless player. It's all about leaving with the crowd on the helmet. Does not look like the officials are getting ready to stop this. Restrepo waits on the punt of Nooncaster. High spiral, and there'll be a fair catch made by Restrepo at the Miami 27. 47-yard punt, 3-0 Miami. Canes on offense. Next. Hockey start for NC State. Look at this last play on third down. You got a hitch and then an inside fade to Concepcion. Concepcion is the primary receiver. He's who you're trying to get open. But if MJ Morris will play on time and throw it out there, he might have a touchdown, Wes. And Kevin Concepcion knew it. I think he's talking to his quarterback right now. And his quarterback, he's had a couple of throws that he's fortunate weren't intercepted. Right. And you see things like that. It just doesn't feel like he's seeing the game the way he needs to see it right now. Miami goes two by two here. On first and 10. And they're going to open it up and hand to Fletcher in the Wolfpack. Handles that nicely. Devon Betty, the linebacker. Jalen Scott, the Sam. Make the play for Tony Gibson's defense. And I think when you try to, you know, spread NC State out, it almost plays into their hand a little bit. You play three defensive linemen. You have linebackers that do a great job of tackling in space, but they're also fast enough to run out underneath some of the short or in intermediate routes by the wide receivers. Fletcher in the backfield with Van Dyke after the two-yard run. And TBD to throw it. Threw it behind Fletcher incomplete in Miami now. Third and long. Yeah, and I think Van Dyke knows it. That take a little off that one. That was a fastball to Fletcher. It was kind of leaking out of the backfield. And you know, I get a, a third and long. And I think this is really where Tony Gibson's defense can be very dangerous because they're naturally aggressive, but they do a lot where it could be an all-out blitz, could be we're just going to rush three, and oftentimes it's not easy to see what you're getting pre-snap. Three to the field here for Van Dyke, and you see 6'5", Young in the boundary. 
He'll make the throw and offline for Colby Young. Shaheen Battle has been in the line of fire fairly often here in Miami's first two possessions. Well, he has, and he's answered the call because Tony Gibson again brought pressure, which meant you had one-on-one -on -one coverage. Here comes pressure inside, even from the secondary, one-on-one -on -one coverage outside with Colby Young and Shaheen Battle with some pretty tight coverage. Point will wait. The punt from Joyce and a fair catch asked for at the 28. Don't forget, we're on site in Raleigh tonight. The huddle is here. Kelsey Riggs, Coach Rick, Eddie Royal, Emac, and EJ Manuel. Full recap of a busy Week 10 Saturday in the ACC. All the highlights, the analysis, interviews, and much more. Live from Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh, following our coverage of NC State Miami tonight. NC State started from its 25, it's 18, and now it's 28. Look at this lineup. Hand to Concepcion, trying to bend it up the field. He'll make a move midfield, 45, cuts back, keeps his feet, no, down to the 36. Well, Robert and I is known for being creative and coming up with unique formations and shifts. Well, how about this? The entire offensive line basically uh, you know, other than the center off to the left side and then run to the other group up front. And Concepcion, who's so dangerous in the open field, surprising he's not able to take that one to the house. Run by Concepcion is 36 yards. It is a pass play. And Daryl Porter Jr. shaken up for Miami after NC State's biggest play. How would you call that in the huddle to get the lineman over there on the... Yeah, I mean, I think you, you got to make up a name like, hey, weird left. I mean, you know, I mean, it's something you don't typically do. And, you know, Robert and I does such a good job of, you know, formations, personnel groupings, you know, things like that. And it's very taxing to opposing defenses. And then you throw in some... Of bizarre wrinkles like that, it, you know, it really kind of forces you defensively to probably be a little bit more generic and then also cover some stuff on the sidelines. You see Daryl Porter Jr. comes in here and, you know, almost kind of, you know, misses on the tackle and a bit of a, a trip or leg whip kind of coming out of it and appears that they're looking at his ankle. Mm. So Porter, who transferred from West Virginia, has had a dozen tackles in the last four for Coach Mario Cristobal, of course, who's out to check on his corner. And meanwhile, MJ Morris and the NC State offense can spend a little time in conversation here. And our first look at KC Concepcion, who had a splash play here and owned them last Saturday against Clemson. Just amazing what this young freshman from Charlotte and Chambers High School has been able to do. I mean, for a young player to get moved around the way that they move him around means that he's got to be a good ball carrier. He's got to understand some elements of pass protection, run blocking schemes, and then because They'll play him outside, they'll play him in the slot, they'll do all of that with him. But he's got to understand, you know, the, the idea of the concepts, not just what his job is. And he's been a really impressive player, as you see. Bill Porter Jr. get helped off the field. Ooh. Good to see him up at least. Yeah, that's a tough one. Not able to put any weight at all. But KC Concepcion, Taylor, the first big explosive tonight. Yeah, the hardest part when I talked to Casey Concepcion for him transitioning to college football, he said was the speed of the game. He remembers the first two practices he had to get adjusted specifically in seven on seven. Defensive players were flying around so fast, but thanks to his IQ that OC Robert and I praises, he's obviously made a pretty easy transition here in week 10. Morris on first and 10 back inside, and here he goes again. It's a really dangerous throw by MJ Morris, but it's a great job of... Anthony Smith. Anthony Smith yeah. working for him. It was hard to see. He, basically, they string out this printout 
And as MJ Morris gets outside, Smith works back inside, which is very dangerous, but he's able to connect and pick up the first down. I beg your pardon, Terrell Timmons, Tim. His 11th catch of the year, it was 82 and 85 that were crossing, crossing each yeah. other. So here's NC State. That's Coit in motion. Kind of an orbit. They're going to direct snap Concepcion around the corner, and he'll get eight before he's thrown out of bounds by Williams. And this is wild. You get Brennan Armstrong in the backfield. Is he the quarterback? No, he's lined up as the running back. Concepcion is the guy taking the snap. He's going to fake it to Armstrong, and off Concepcion goes. And so, listen, anybody that's been watching this conference and saw what... Robert and I did at Virginia with Keaton Thompson, a receiver, quarterback, tight end type player. I think you're going to see a mixture of, of, Ke of Concepcion doing things like that. Delbert Mims in the game. Here's Morris trying to flip it on the perimeter, and it was juggled by Penix. Incomplete. So third and one coming up for the Wolfpack. Well, a nine not only had. You mentioned Keaton Thompson. You could go Billy Kemp, Alamade Zacchaeus, and then last year at Syracuse, Aronde Gadsden became kind of like one of those jackknife guys. But I think what he does is he finds the guy he thinks his best football player is, and I think we probably would all agree right now it's Concepcion. And so you say, all right, we're going to get this guy the ball as many times as he can. Then we're going to identify what our other players do well, try to put them in position to make plays. Lassane. In the, in the left side, they flip it out here, and on the near side, and the touchdown belongs to Jordan Poole. Jordan Poole on the 11th play of his offensive career, because two weeks ago in the bye week, he was a linebacker that got moved. And again, it's Robert and I being creative. Sneak pull out into the flat with Delbert Mims, the short yardage back in the backfield. He was basically uncovered. Narvison pushes the lead to four. You saw, you know, basically a bit of a gadget play on second down. And then you put pull in the backfield, and you think you're going to get lead, and you're running this way. And you're just going to sneak him out in the flat, run coverage into the middle of the field. He's essentially uncovered. It looks like Wesley Besaint is the player that probably was initially responsible for him. He's just uncovered with good backfield action. And I think Poole might be like, hey, man, like this fullback playing offensive thing's kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Throw me the ball with nobody around me. Mario Cristobal's like, okay, they got us there. The guy that moved from linebacker just caught a touchdown pass. And MJ Morris, nice drive, Tim, in his third possession. Well, and, and honestly, let's give credit to Robert and I. Honestly, think of the unique formation to start the drive. And some of the different things they've done in the backfield with Brennan Armstrong back there. It, it definitely is something that just challenges you as a defense in terms of where you're looking and where you're expecting the football to go. Hand over in kick. There'll be no return. Miami will go from its 25. Don't forget, college basketball is back. And on Monday, ACC Network's got a full lineup for you. ACC PM will be live in Blacksburg starting at 3, then at 5 o'clock. How about Kenny Brooks and number 8 Virginia Tech hosting High Point on the ladies' side. Then we'll go men's doubleheader at 7 from Chapel Hill, followed by number 2 Duke and Dartmouth at 9, and then wrap things up with nothing but net around 11 o'clock. It's all Monday, and it's all here on ACC Network. So now Miami, after watching NC State go 72 yards in five plays, the big explosive to Concepcion ultimately ends in the Morris to pull touchdown. Van Dyke in the gun. Going to throw. Here's the pressure coming. Hit as he does and caught. What a heck of a grab coming to the near side. And the catch made 
by Jacoby George. That is an amazing play by Tyler Van Dyke because he nearly got blasted before he got rid of this football by Devin Van. And to hang in there, and just get a sense of his toughness, his ability to kind of just stand in there knowing he's not even going to be able to really follow through but he's on the left hash. He's got to throw a corner route outside the numbers. That's really well done. At the 43. So a throw of 18 gets Miami going. And now they're going to run it with Fletcher. Breaks away from the would-be tackle. And into Wolfpack territory he goes before finally being taken down by Sean Brown. You get a sense of Mark Fletcher's strength because that was Peyton Wilson kind of shooting the gap you know, getting his, you know, hands on the shoulder pads of Fletcher. And we see, excuse me, it looks like Fordham who, who was in there. And so Fordham, who's a really good player in his own right, just not able to hang on. Caden Fordham, a redshirt sophomore from Jacksonville. Played at the Bowl School, Pontevedra. Now first and 10. Miami trying to answer the state touchdown. Quick throw inside route, and that's George into the NC State secondary, taken down on the play by Aiden White outside the 20-yard line of the Wolfpack. And again, it is, you know, it's all out pressure. Here comes Peyton Wilson coming downhill, and that was a designed, you know, a called run. It's an RPO. And that's a good job of being quick with the football, and then a great job of being a hand catcher by Jacoby George on a ball that's thrown behind him. 19-yard strike. At the state 22 for Van Dyke. To Fletcher and no go. 11 on the scene. Well, he's got the brace on the knee that he hurt last week against Clemson, but still affected that effect. Miami trying to answer now. Behind the stick, though, here on second down. Quick throw, looking for the tight end. And Riley Williams, the freshman from Portland, Oregon, out of IMG, could not hang on. Yeah, and it's he's wide open, and it's a nice play call. Um, second and long, may end up picking up the first down. Another RPO. It's a run pass option. Van Dyke pulls it, and he's got big tight end wide open. Look, there have been some, some offensive miscues as well for Miami. Four of 11 is Van Dyke for 50 yards. And they bring 6-4 Isaiah Horton into the ball game, and they're going to push him to the top of the formation as you look at it. And now three to the boundary here, Tim. And with formation into the boundary, they could throw it up to Horton at the top of the screen. He's one-on-one -on -one with Aiden White. Van Dyke going to take the shot for Horton. And incomplete, and a flag is down here. Back where Van Dyke released it. Van Dyke gets blasted, maybe roughing the passer. We could also potentially have a holding in there on the all-out pressure, and then just miscommunication with Horton and Van Dyke on the one-on-one -on -one route. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense number 13. Half the distance to the goal penalty, first down. Travali Price. Well, it's all-out pressure. You can see these guys coming here. I mean, they're bringing it from everywhere. That's why I thought. Van Dyke was going to go for the one-on-one -on -one up top, and... Ooh. Surprised at that one. So, after the penalty, third on the Wolfpack for 33 yards, and now Van Dyke is going to move Colby Young to the field side of the formation. Fletcher's the running back for the Miami quarterback here on first and 10, just outside NC State's 12. Give us to Fletcher and right into the stack. Miami trying to push it, and I think they'll give him a yard for sure, maybe two to the 10. So Miami, who comes into the game, running the ball for 183.8 yards a game. It's fourth in the ACC, 31st nationally. Not quite as good in league play, Tim, only 145 yards a game. And their red zone work has been exemplary. Fourth best in the ACC, 20 touchdowns and 34 possessions.
Peyton Wilson and his Wolfpack need to stop here. Two tight ends again, but they're split in the formation. Van Dyke, back foot throw, shoots it to Horton and Wilson. Or no, that's Fordham 10 that knocks him out of bounds. Shy of the first down inside the five at the four. Well, I think we're we're paying Kate Fordham, Kate Fordham some compliments because we've confused him with Peyton Wilson a few times. He looks like him because he's covering a lot of ground. That's a nice job reading the play action, seeing Isaiah Horton, a wide receiver, scraping across the formation, but then running with him is a pretty good job there. McCoy has come in, a backup offensive lineman at 290 pounds, wearing jersey number 81. He's to the right side of the package with McCormick, the tight end. Fletcher, the ball carrier, and falls down for what I think will be a first down inside the three, but a flag is thrown. And I don't think Miami's ever set. We're talking about McCoy. They're trying to communicate up front, and I think as they're communicating, Tyler Van Dyke goes ahead with the cadence, and I don't think Miami ever gets set before the ball snapped. Full start, offense. Not all 11 players became set after the previous play. Five-yard penalty, third down. You know, a lot of times, you look at the right side, see, everyone's trying to communicate. See, McCoy, McCormick, they're trying to hear the call. You know, they're setting the front to figure out who they're supposed to block, and just never end up getting set. So you got Restrepo and George to the top. And, then, and I think if you're NC State here, go ahead and rush three. Drop coverage, concede the fact that, concede a field goal at this point. And I think Miami's burning a timeout. Mario Cristobal was in a long conversation across the way here early in this second period. Yeah, and listen, maybe Mario, who he's, and I, may, I think he maybe just said something to Tyler Van Dyke right there. And I know Tyler's played a lot of football. He's had some interceptions this year that have been somewhat of head scratchers for a kid with his experience. I think he's saying to him, look, we have three. Like, like, like go ahead and remind him. Like, there's no harm in reminding your quarterback of the situation. It's third and seven. They may only rush three. The windows are going to be tight. What we don't want is a bad play where we end up having a turnover. They've lived that a little bit under the North Carolina game. And so because of that, just cover the situation. Shannon Dawson and his quarterback going over the packaging here of what they might want to do. Tim, I'm not going to be surprised if they run it here. Right? I mean, look at where their rush numbers they have 46 yards. They're going to have 103, 46 rushing, 57 passing. They're having almost five a play. And Wes, guess what? If for some reason Tony Gibson decides to dial up a pressure, you might crease it. So, yeah. like, I, I don't – listen, I think they're going to put the ball in the air. Mm. But saying all of that, look, I don't think it's a bad idea to hand the football off in this environment. So to go back to the tight end, McCormick, and now the three receivers again. Young at the bottom of the screen, Restrepo and George to the top. Van Dyke will throw, batted in the air. Jalen Scott swatted it right out of the air. Swatted it right out of the air. And a lot of times, you get tips, they end up getting intercepted. It's a little play action, and then Van Dyke is trying to hit Scobie. George coming underneath and Jalen Scott who Tony Gibson told us has probably been our most underrated player comes up with a big play there 27 yard try Borgalas to get the Canes to within one and he does ripped it right through there so almost two minutes gone in this second quarter of play in Raleigh we got a 1.46 and 8 tomorrow for quarterfinals on the men's side Semifinals come up Wednesday at 6 and 8 o'clock. Nearby at the Wake Med Soccer Park in Cary. In fact, the commissioner of the Atlantic Coast Conference, Jim Phillips, stopped by to visit with us before the game. And talked about it. He'll stay overnight to be a part of that championship tomorrow here in the Triangle. Jalen yeah, Scott swatted it out of the air. So the Borgales field goal draws Miami to within a 7-6 count here early in the second quarter. And 
safety for Gallus. Sends it, and there'll be no return by Julian Gray. And Tim, let's take a look at our New York Life Drive recap the last time NC State had the ball. That was pretty impressive. Explosive play on a bizarre formation for NC State. The KC Concepcion going, and then it, it was more of Concepcion. Kind of a wildcat look, but with Brennan Armstrong in the backfield, and then obviously slipping the fullback out in the flat. A touchdown pass to Poole, and that was a really good job. Just some creativity, some uniqueness, and you know, now we're getting some more uniqueness with kind of a quad set yep. with Concepcion in the backfield. Yep, taking the snap is the freshman. It's a run play, and he slips down. After a gain of, I thought, almost two and a half, it's going to be marked as one to the 26. But how about this for trust? Mm -hmm. A true freshman receiver that's been playing a bunch of running back he's already taken that's his second snap I think that he's taking taken from center and really remarkable that he's been able to digest all of this yep now Michael Allen in the backfield with Morris there's Concepcion the orbit and what do we have now movement on NC State And Concepcion and James Williams were jawing at one another. Illegal snap, offense, number 54. Five-yard penalty, second down. Dylan McMahon making his 40th start tonight. His 10th at center from Savannah, Georgia. Called for the infraction. You see the numbers on NC State who kept the penalties down last Saturday against Clemson. Second down, play fake. Morris going to throw inside the route. That's caught. Heck of a catch, and that is Dakari Collins, who had a grab last week for six yards, which was his fourth catch of the year. It was his first catch in five games last week. Yeah, and he's at six foot four, 212. He's a big physical receiver, and he does a nice job of winning inside. Good job, you know, catching with his hands away from his body, and then it's an also a really nice job of MJ Morris under some pressure. Delivering a strike. Devontae Brown, who replaced Porter at the corner for Miami, made the stop on Dakari Collins. Play fake Morris. Soft roll, side on throw, overthrows Keon Lassane. So Lassane, the Wolfpack senior, has got 17 catches on the year, has had eight in the last two games for Doran's team. And it does feel like with all the emphasis on Kevin Concepcion, you like need someone else to step up, you know, and they've yep. they've tried, I think, at times, whether it's been Trent Penix from the tight end position or Lassane, who's an experienced player, Julian Gray, who's been good in the return game, just finding a way to get some production outside Concepcion. Two backs with Morris now, Allen and Raphael. That's Michael Allen to the boundary. Here's Morris taking the deep shot, looking for Concepcion and way over the top. To Corey Couch was the cover guy for Miami. And now it's third and the full 10 on the ball. The ball it was just airmailed there, Tim. Yeah, I mean, the, the coaching point is if it were a grenade, no one would have died, Wes. I mean, that's how, how far off target it was. But it, it's an inside fade, much like the one we saw earlier where Concepcion won. It's the same route combination. It's not the right throw. And pretty good coverage by Corey Couch. Wolfpack one for three on third down. This is third the full ten. Miami bringing an extra guy. Morris hit, fumbled the ball. Miami recovers. Just the second fumble of the year by NC State. Jaden Davis is the guy that hit MJ Morris and Jared Harrison Hunt, the recovery in plus territory for the Canes. Jaden Davis comes on the pressure, and NC State just doesn't block it correctly. You got two going for one. Basically, you got Peak, the right tackle, and McKay, the right guard. They just are both dealing with Bain. But here comes Jaden Davis. He's unblocked, and I think that Morris thinks that he should be protected. You got two going for one and a free runner. You're not blocking it correctly. So Miami 
plus field territory at the 29, trailing a point. And NC State, who was one of eight schools in the FBS when our game started tonight with just one fumble on the season, now has coughed it up for a second time, and Miami trying to take advantage and at the same time grab the lead, and they get the ball to Jacoby George, who picks up a first down to the 18. And that's what I was saying about the wide receiver screens earlier. I think Shannon Dawson's going to call a number of them and just hope that he catches Tony Gibson in a pressure, which he does here, and this nearly splits if... Now we know us, uh, number 61 just gets a piece of the defender. Kobe George probably scores. So Tony Gibson's defense got to hold the rope here for the Wolfpack with the first turnover of the night. Fletcher the running back with Van Dyke. Van Dyke will throw for the end zone and overthrows Brashard Smith incomplete. First time we've seen zero on offense for Miami targeted in the throw game. Yeah, Smith's got good speed. They like to give him a few opportunities to use that speed. And I will say this, so far, the North Carolina State defensive backs, guys playing on court, they've been put on islands. And they've done a pretty nice job so far because they've been covering one-on-one -on -one with very little help or no help at times on a number of these throws. Pistol set here for Van Dyke. Look at Restrepo tight to the formation. You see him there in the screen. Got a hand to Fletcher. And he got tripped up. Nice play fighting through the line. Savion Jackson making his 28th start tonight in his 44th game for the Wolfpack. Was able to get a hand on Fletcher and pull him down. Similar situation to the last trip down here for Miami. Same thing for NC State. Third and long, probably conceding the field goal. And so Tyler Van Dyke will be smart with the football. Young to the left, two receivers to the right. Van Dyke looks that way. Going to send one to the end zone. It's intercepted. Aiden White. with a red zone error. Aiden White's eighth career interception. His second of the season. State with a one point lead when we continue in Raleigh. And here's number eight. It's the right read, wrong throw. You're gonna have Restrepo running to the post. George on a go outside. They're playing cover two with these safeties. The safety comes in here. This ball needs to go to the back pylon. It's the right read, but get it to the back pylon. It's flat and left inside. And because of that, the corner, Aiden White, is able to sink and intercept the football. So Aiden White, preseason All-ACC from Asheville, North Carolina. Eighth career interception. Inverted wishbone for the Wolfpack. Off the 20 with Armstrong keeping it. Rides a block around the edge, and Williams and Armstrong collide at the 29. And boy, let me tell you, the post scrimmage pushing and shoving has escalated through the first half between these two schools. Well, and part of that is because the pads are popping. Is Williams, we saw him earlier. It's a big collision with two big physical guys, and. But I think we've seen some success out of this Brennan Armstrong in the game, run game stuff. I think we're going to continue to see more of it. Yep. Morris has come back in as the quarterback. Robert and I is deep into his bag here tonight. Concepcion, first down and more. Stiff arm, tried to get to the 30 and did out to the 32. Davis and Cloyd the tackle, but it's 44 in the white that's your number one guy. But listen, and trying to cut him, doing everything they can to Reuben Bain. He's been a really disruptive player, and look, give him some misdirection, a throw at his legs, and you do that to create some confusion. Jaden Davis is shaking up on the play for Miami. Back after this. 
things go sideways, will you be prepared? went down he was escorted into the locker room couldn't bear any weight on his feet that left ankle was not in a shoe or a sock he was carried off by two trainers so one cornerback down another one right now in the tens I'll keep you posted on both of their statuses guys and it brings the Browns out of American Heritage High School in Plantation to play corner Devonta you already knows in the game and now younger brother Damari has joined him here's MJ Morris throwing it deep and it is incomplete Terrell Timmons intended and now a marker on the play against Devontae Brown. When they went after him right away, it was a double move. Knowing that you're going to have new corners in the football Pass game. Interference. Defense, number seven. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. And it was a pretty good job of MJ Morris of just getting the football off because he was under so much pressure in the pocket. And that right arm grabbing him. Timmons getting up looking for the flag. Terrell already with a catch tonight looking for more. Delbert or Jordan Poole who's got the touchdown catch is back in the game. You see Mitchell the tight end now Concepcion is behind the play. He'll get the call to midfield. Tackled by Corey Flagg. He was the hero of overtime against Clemson, of course, for Miami. If I asked you what position KC Concepcion played, what would you say? Joker. I mean, no, like, I no, feel like I mean, he's been in the backfield as a running back more than out as a wide receiver. But you know the NFL term Joker, right? Yeah, the guy that no. plays everywhere. I mean, like, like Debo Samuel, like yeah. whatever you want to call him. Cordero basically, Patterson in Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. The guy you're trying to get the football to. Yep. Kendrick Raphael now into the backfield. You see NC State load the top of the formation. And here's Morris looking to throw. Pressure coming. He's going to take another deep shot. That's Julian Gray, and it's intercepted. Cam Kitchens. Right outside the 10 yard line, Kitchens comes up with the pick. It's his 10th career interception, and Tim, it's his fourth this year. Well, it's a good job of Kitchens just reading the quarterback's eyes. It's single high safety, meaning one safety in the middle of the field. Man coverage across the board, including press to MJ Morris's left, and his eyes just immediately come to the go route to his right. Cam Kitchens just follows it there to the football. So Miami, as you see MJ Morris go to the medical tent here, he took a shot. James Williams. That ball just is left so far inside. And, and he does get blasted by Williams, who's laid on a pretty a few hard hits tonight. Henry Parrish Jr.'s coming to the ball game with Van Dyke. First carry of the night for Parrish, trying to wheel here to the near side. He'll get 10 and a Miami first down. So the transfer from Ole Miss, who comes in with 454 yards of rushing, Miami's leader, eighth in the ACC, just under 65 a game, gets 11 on his first carry. I do think because of the depth in the running back room for Miami, they want to run the football. They're able to keep guys fresh. And there's also a different style in terms of how these guys run. Pistol with two tight ends on the first down snap. Parrish again. And Brown came down the box to help out on the tackle. And also had Brandon Cleveland. Boys, the sophomore from Tampa been active for the Wolfpack. Big fella at 6'4, 300. Playing in there, CJ Clark, some of those other guys that play in the front for Tony Gibson. There's Brennan Armstrong now. Could he be coming in to play quarterback if Morris is shaking up again? Second down for Van Dyke. Parrish again. And the Wolfpack turning back shy of the 30. Red Hibbler. First guy there. There's Jalen Scott. Just look at here, you know, Miami gets into this unbalanced look. I feel like Parrish missed a cut here to his left and you know, try to stay front side. And now you get a third and six. 
I said it earlier, Xavier Restrepo is the guy for me. I, I would just describe him as QB friendly. He's up at the top of the screen, and a lot of times they like to release him into the wake of another wide receiver's release to just find the soft spot in the zone. That's Horton out there with him. Here's Van Dyke up in the pocket. Now he's going to run with it, gets the first down, and a flag is thrown behind the play back at the 22. Van Dyke brought down at the 36. Holding offense number 70. 10 yard penalty, third down. A huge play on Miami here. It's JV on Cohen who gets called for the infraction. Here he is at left guard right there. And I think this happened so late. Like Van Dyke, Van Dyke takes off running. I get, gets him there. That hold on Davin Van is the right call. I thought it, it originally thought it came a little late, but it really is what allowed Tyler Van Dyke to take off and pick up the first down. Now you find yourself in third and forever backed up. Again, like I said in the red zone before, you gotta be smart with the football. Van Dyke, straight drop. Here they come. Ball is loose. And they scramble for it. It got banged out by Hibbler. And as NC State recovered, they have. I think it's Davin Van who comes up with it. That's what I mean, Wes. Just understand the situation. Like a little bit of a clock in your head in terms of like how quickly the ball has to come out. You know, they drop coverage, get off it quickly, find the check down. But standing in the pocket holding the football, bad things happen. It's just a three-man rush. Just go ahead and get the ball to Mark Fletcher because you don't and you're not securing the football to turn over in your own end. Four plays. We've had four straight turnovers, two by each school. And the Wolfpack is first and goal. Miami's nine and MJ Morris. Has Raphael with him in the backfield. Morris, pressure coming, sacked. Maui Noah, Kiko, fired through the linebacker and took him off his point. But Maui Noah, who I think is coming off his best game a week ago, they bring him on the pressure here. It's actually, you know, single coverage with no help, and he just decides to shoot his gun. Basically, see, you know, the hole in front of you, Go after MJ Morris, and now I think NC State kind of finds themselves in a unique situation, second and goal from outside the 15. Pressure coming. Morris in trouble again. Buying time. A flag is thrown. He throws it away as he bailed from under the pressure. And boy, MJ Morris is still kind of reaching toward that right side of his rib area. Kitchens and Taylor. Where the guys in white chasing him. Does Miami take this? Tim? I, I think you do. Holding offense number 52. 10 yard penalty, second down. I, I think you take this penalty. This is McKay, the right guard, who gets called for the holding. And it's on Taylor, who did a really good job winning on a swim move right away it's clearly a hold and Wes I, the reason I said you can't pick up a first down right okay and so the further you're moving them back here you know now all of a sudden you make the field goal a little bit more challenging yep Armstrong's come in Morris is out or to the top of the screen here's Brennan Armstrong keeping it and he will get back to the 20 yard line on the second down play seven yards Jared Harrison Hunt so here, here's the thing I, I would say it's third and goal from the 20 you don't even have plays in your game plan for this unless it's an end of game scenario right. and so because of that a, a, and, and with a quarterback in the turnovers that we've seen I'm handing this football off and I'm kicking a field goal and now Dave Doran going to take a timeout with 341 to go before the half. And we're going to take it with them here at Carter Finley Stadium. Saturday night in Raleigh, we got a one-point game.
Eagles are a must right now. Wes and Tim, we will see you back here at the half. Enjoying it so far. Kelsey, thanks. Third and goal off the 20 out of the timeout. Armstrong just going to keep this. And Tim, you talked about running it to set up the potential Braden Narvison field goal. Miami brought a lot of pressure. Armstrong didn't have a lot of room, but here's Narvison nonetheless. And you just don't, you don't have plays in the game plan for third and goal from the 20. So unless it's an end of game, you know, scenario. And so with that, I think just being smart with the football with the way we've seen turnovers kind of have an impact so far. 39 yard try for Braden Narvison. To try and make it a four point lead. And the kick is good. Ten six lead for the Wolfpack under three to go and time for food lions food for thought and unfortunately they sell turnovers. Hey this is kind of like football hot potato here. I don't want it. You take it. I mean just the turnovers now some of it's been good plays defensively. Some of it I think has just been missed assignments or bad decisions offensively but it's made this a really close football game because of where they've happened in the red zone and backed up for Miami and obviously when you do that as you look at both teams turning it over twice typically will find yourself down if, if where your turnovers happen end up having a bigger impact on this football game clearly that's been the case for Miami well and in the span of six minutes we had four straight turnovers and it has impacted the game to keep it where it is at 10-6 now Miami has two timeouts and plenty of offensive pop here Colin Smith will kick it away and there will be no return for Brashard Smith don't forget the ACC Fall Championships continue on ACC Network. Men's soccer has quarterfinal rounds starting at 2 o'clock Eastern tomorrow and then continues with semifinals on Wednesday. All matches are here on ACC Network, the home of ACC Championships, and this one is a week from tomorrow. Ed Carey at the Wake Med Soccer Park. Folks here in the Triangle do a terrific job hosting the ACC Men's and Women's Championships. Ball at the 25 now for Miami. Two timeouts for Van Dyke and under three to go here in the first half. Fletcher is back in as the running back. And on first down, he'll get the carry. Got five, make it six before Battle able to take him down to 31. You know, Wes, offensively for Miami, you know, it, it just felt like a struggle. Tyler Van Dyke is just six of 16. They obviously have not passed the ball well. You know, running the football, which they clearly want to do, they've had a little bit more success with that. A lot of times a two-minute drive, just because the tempo of it can help you as a quarterback just get into a rhythm. Here goes Restrepo again in motion. Van Dyke to throw here on the second and four play. Wants the deep shot, now going to buy time. Here's Fletcher on the check down and Peyton Wilson will collar him at the 40 and the 41 is where they will whistle the play just ahead of two minutes to go and Devon Betty shaken up Colby well, Young is looking for the football I thought there was a chance early on he had Restrepo Obviously didn't like it. Looked like he was getting ready to pull it. But if you don't like it, you don't want to turn it over, check it down. And that's what I mean a little bit about getting into a rhythm in some of these two-minute situations. And procedure on Miami. Full start offense, number 73. Five-yard penalty, first down. Inez Cooper, big sophomore from Pleasant Grove, Alabama. Menez is your and, and if you're Miami, owner, 350 yeah. pounder, Tim. Sorry, Wes, but if you're Miami, you, you know you got to go. I mean, you you is a, a false start penalty, but they're going to wind the clock. Like, yep. like get up and go and be ready. First and 15. Van Dyke on a straight drop, crossing route. Jacoby George. 
35 yard line. That was Battle and Jalen Scott combining on the stop of the Wolfpack. Under a minute to go and the clock still moving on Miami with the two timeouts. Second and 15 as you see Shannon Dawson. Van Dyke quick throw overthrows McCormick. Third and 15 clock stops with 44 seconds to go. And I think now because of the, the pace of this and how this has gone. Got to keep the ball on the ground. Probably force NC State to take their final time out. It's just been a rough night so far for Tyler Van Dyke. Just eight of 19, and really had one there to McCormick that he wasn't very close on. MJ Morris has also found the road hard to run. Third and long. Here's Van Dyke with time. McCormick, the tight end, taken down. Open field play by Aiden White. And with a half minute to go, Dave Dorn calls a timeout. I think he was thinking about it. Took him a second to do it, but it's definitely the right move. I'm going to add a couple seconds here. I think that I think he waited a little bit to, to take it. That's why I thought that Miami would run the football, force North Carolina State to take their second timeout, leave them with only one. Listen, you're, you're talking about punting, you know, from your own 36-yard line. You might pop a return. Maybe it takes, you know, one or two completions before you're able to get Narvison an opportunity before the half. Van Dyke, Shannon Dawson, and Matt Lee, the center, all in a bit of a dialogue there as they got to the hurricane bench. I will say one thing with Miami, I feel like there has been some general confusion. Like we're either going for it or we're not in some of these end of half or end of game scenarios where it's just been a little unclear. One timeout for the Wolfpack, Dylan Joyce, the Aussie for Miami, who averages about 42 yards a punt, gets this one away. Point will signal for oh, it hit and then skips out of bounds inside the 20 near the 15 and had Coy been able to make a return there Tim I thought for a moment maybe NC State would try and see if they could get something downfield but now I'm not so sure yeah inside the 20 yard line you would think that Dave Doran's most likely content to go to the half with a four point lead. And that's in fact what's going to happen. So Morris is just going to take a knee, and the Wolfpack is going to take a four point lead to the locker room. So after the early Miami field goal, they got an explosive from Concepcion. They cast it in for a touchdown. Narvison's added a field goal, and we've got linebacker Jordan Poole. Rashard Smith waits on the kick, and there'll be no return. Miami from its 25, but first, here's Taylor Tannenbaum. I got a chance to catch up with Mario Cristobal coming out of the locker room. He was in a good mood. He said, I love the way my team played with toughness, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Only problem is they're coming away with threes instead of touchdowns. He likes the way they're running it, but they need to be better on point in the passing game. This is a game, he said, you're just going to have to grind it out, kind of echoing what Dave Dorn said heading into the locker room. He said, hey, we get the ball first in this second half. Let's go to work, guys. So he'll go with Mark Fletcher Jr. as the running back. Tim, I thought they had a lot of success early with those two tight ends, but three receivers, 11 personnel starts this drive. Van Dyke wants to throw, and Colby Young, a sliding catch near the 34 ahead of Shaheen Battle. Wes, I would agree with you on the two tight end sets. The other thing they're doing is they're putting Xavier Restrepo kind of on the hip of the tight end to kind of almost create as if it was a two tight end set. And running some of these RPOs on it and hitting 
Colby Young on the slant backside. You see Restrepo's to the top of the formation. It's Young now next to the tight end McCormick. And the give is to Fletcher and across the 40 and a first down. Run of almost eight. Sean Brown, the safety, makes the play for the Wolfpack. And the reason, Wes, to get, just kind of put a bow on it, you see Colby Young here. He's blocking Peyton Wilson. Now, that's not a great matchup for Miami, but a lot, oftentimes, if Peyton, Peyton Wilson has contained, all you have to do is just put your body inside him. They just ran the football for a decent game to pick up a first down with a receiver blocking NC State's best defensive player. Nine yards on the run. Fletcher back to it. Tries to sneak to the right. And that's going to be seven, almost eight more on first down. They keep getting him those chunks. It'll be hard to get Miami out of that package. I think that's really, you know, the plan coming into this football game as well. And then you do it enough that Tony Gibson's like, look, I'm not going to let you run the football on me. I'm going to heat you up. Then you get your one-on-one -on -one opportunities in the passing game. Hmm. Second and short in three snaps. Miami's moved to 25 yards. Fletcher cut back into the secondary to the Wolfpack 35. A run there of 16 and Aiden White a tackle. Yeah, and basically what happens, Fletcher does a good job of sifting through it and Sean Brown, number zero, just fits it in the wrong gap. And as he does that, Fletcher is able to rip off a big run. 85 yards on 14 carries, a new career high for Mark Fletcher, the true freshman. And here's that unbalanced look with Restrepo on the hip of the tight end again. Yep. First and 10, Fletcher again, trying to tear away from the interior of NC State's pressure. And finally, Peyton Wilson will wrestle him down after a gain of right about three. Well, Peyton Wilson is a flat gamer, but it is a body that plays physical. <laughs> you know, he's mixing it up inside. He does a great job playing on the perimeter. And like maybe he's trying to shake something off with that elbow or shoulder. Don Cheney Jr.'s come in now to replace Fletcher. Two tight ends to the right. Cheney to that right side. And over the top come the Wolfpack. And that's Jalen Scott making the play. Jalen. Dan Scott and Peyton Wilson on the tackle. He kind of sets the edge there. And you know, Peyton Wilson, after that last play, he just clearly something's wrong. He, the injury history on him has been well documented. Both ACLs and both shoulders and just been through a lot, but plays as though he has no fear of injury. Miami two of eight on third down. They hand the ball, and this is Fletcher, and he will be brought down at the 27. And is this two down territory? No, here comes Borgales. So it is fourth down and three, and you see ESPN Analytics says that's a green light. Well, listen, with the way Borgales has kicked the football, the way this game has gone with turnovers, I like this decision here by Mario Cristobal to kick it. 45-yard try. Kick is away. And Borgales hooked it. NC missed him. One of the reasons I thought that Miami should kick the football, look, I, this game has a feel of a game that's going to be decided by a field goal. Maybe less. He's usually money. MJ Morris to Michael Allen on first down for a yard to the 28. Okay, now we had this discussion briefly. Analytics said go for it. Mario Cristobal's got one of the better kickers in the country. He tried for the points here. Listen, Hindsight, I know, 2020. Yeah, for sure, you know, because the kick wasn't made. You know, also have a quarterback in MJ Morris who's completed half of his passes tonight. He's 6 of 12 for under 100 yards and so you know, there is an element of look maybe you think of our defense maybe ought to hold them to 10 points that's why I'm sending my kicker out there 
yard for Allen. Morris with Miami only bringing three up in the pocket and in trouble. Brought down shy of the 29, Jared Harrison Hunt made the play for the Canes who were pretty effective with three-man pressure here. And I think just, there's just this hesitation right now you're seeing from MJ Morris. He's just not really sure. Thought he had a quick out to his right, which is where he was initially looking. And you know, now he finds himself in a, in a difficult situation, third and nine. You know, a guy who we really haven't called his name much is Reuben Bain, who's been dominant in games we've seen him so far this season. See Raphael with Morris here. This is third and long for the Wolfpack. Play clock down to one. Morris gets it snapped. Now in trouble. To his right. Going to throw. There's a flag on the play into the bench area incomplete. This is typically a hold. And that's what the case is here. Got to believe Miami declines this, right? On third down. Holding offense number 65. Penalties decline. Fourth down. There we go. So three and out for the Wolfpack after the missed field goal. See the right side of your screen here is MJ Morris gets outside just that hold there and it's on Bain. Again it's peak the redshirt freshman. Maybe it's part of the reason we haven't called Bain's name as much Wes. Noon Kester. The punt. Restrepo to his right. It will hit and skip around, and NC State will down it short of the 35 where Miami will go. Well, Miami first came to Raleigh in 1981 to play the Wolfpack. Breaker. Not and to funny. his right, yeah, Pete good. Carroll, for heaven's sakes, was the defensive coordinator. In fact, it was Carroll's defense in 1981 that forced six turnovers in the ball game. But alas, Miami still won the game. And yes, for those of you who might not know, that's Lane's dad, Monty Kiffin, who is a terrific NFL defensive coach. Don Cheney Jr. in the backfield. Here's Van Dyke and sacked. Davin Van again tonight, reaching in there. What an effort by Davin Van after missing Van Dyke initially. Almost gets run past him. But watch the second effort. Then again, double team splits it, swipes at the football, but that kind of grab of Van Dyke's legs. He's trying to get outside the pocket. And well, just great effort. Davin Van, who's been a very good player here for the Wolfpack for a while. Wear the number one for the Wolfpack. It comes with a little extra, and Davin Van knows it. Sack and a half tonight. Second down give. Out to the 31. Here's the run by Don Cheney. Let's check with Taylor. Yeah, if you didn't know, Davin Van is a state champion wrestler back in his high school days. I talked to Peyton Wilson about him. He calls him an animal on the field. Went as far as to say he's the best pass rusher he's personally seen. Van's a quiet guy if you ask around, but between the lines, the aggression and intensity he brings every day is so important. Defensive coordinator Tony Gibson says Davin's actually a lot like Peyton with the way that they play every single play, and you're seeing his impact on this D-line, guys. Those guys that wear the glasses, Tim, for the photos, Von Miller, Davin Van, those guys. You can't trust those cats. <laughs> Here's Van Dyke. Throws. This is McCormick, the tight end. Tried to lower the shoulder in the Wolfpack there with three jerseys. And McCormick and Jalen Scott get up, wolfing at one another. And Miami's going to have to punt. It just feels like both of these teams, they, they have an offensive penalty that gets you off schedule. It's just tough sledding. I think that's been part of the issue tonight, whether it's been a procedure penalty, a holding penalty, get into these long third down scenarios and what kind of ping pong with this football right now. Joyce punts it away. Wolfpack was in the neighborhood and out of bounds right around the 30 yard line. We'll see how they step this off with 636. As you see it there, there's a lot of football games here. This program's a lot of football games. They recruit 
state of North Carolina. Steve Smith, obviously, a great Carolina Panther player. And so I, I understand why Dave Dorn would take offense to it. Here's Morris on first down. Long throw to the far side. And, boy, not a lot of room for Julian Gray after the catch. Damari Brown right there. And Dave Doran in season 11 here in Raleigh is one of those twos in the right column. They're battling now. This is updated in the ACC through our games played this weekend. NC State with enough in play here to be a group that if Louisville were to make a misstep here. Now they did lose head to head to the cards. That is a check in the wrong box with the Wolfpack there. But nonetheless. They're in the fight here as we get to November. Morris to his right, and this is Penix at the 35, and Trent Penix on second down, trying to get toward the 38. And instead, it'll be third and about three on the play. The Saint, the linebacker, the first guy there. But here's the other back end of the story real quick, Tim. Was he and Steve Smith talked, and on Monday, Dave Dorn in his, in his press conference talked about he and Steve Smith talked. Everybody's good. He wants Steve Smith to come be a part of an NC State game here in Raleigh on the sidelines. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing for Dave Dorn. That's a good thing for Steve Smith and everybody who follows ACC football in this state. No question about it. And it's a good thing if you recruit the Charlotte area. It's yeah. a good thing if you... And, and honestly, I think there's elements of this program, the way Dave Dorn's built it with like a grit and a toughness that you kind of would describe the way that Steve Smith played the game. Missed throw for Porter Rooks. Speaking of Charlotte, the junior wide receiver at Myers Park. And NC State is going to go three and out. Just as Miami did. So the Wolfpack now, their last five drives they've had 13 or I'm sorry they've had 12 yards total a field goal a couple of turnovers and now two three and outs to start this second half and Wes it feels like it's going to take a gadget play a trick play something for one of these offenses to catch a spark Restrepo the fair catch Miami takes over four point lead for the Wolfpack Welcome back to Raleigh. Don't forget, we got basketball. Opening night is Monday. ACC PM gets us started live from the Castle in Blacksburg at 3 o'clock. And then Kenny Brooks and the Hokies from the Final Four. Liz Kidley, Georgia Amore, and crew take on High Point. And then at 7 o'clock, Dan Bonner and I join you from Smith Center. And then Mike Monaco, Randolph Childers from Cameron. Before nothing but net closes a busy opening night of ACC basketball. Four-point lead for the Wolfpack. Miami near its 20 to start the drive and Fletcher falls forward for a couple here on first down before Peyton Wilson makes the point. It's Colby Young trying to seal off Peyton Wilson. Peyton Wilson's finally like, nah, man, you're going to block me with the receiver. I've had enough of that. I'm just going to throw you back into the running back. <laughs> Second down and eight. Crowd here at Carter Finley's been on its feet most of the night. Flag down, Fletcher the carry. Another flag down as Brown comes launching from the safety position to hit Fletcher. Brandon Cleveland, big 44, was also involved, and Fletcher is off the bottom of Illegal the Illegal formation, more than four players in the backfield offense. Five-yard penalty, second down. So basically, they're, they're, they're saying up here, see how off the ball yeah. right tackle Francis Malinoa is? They're saying that he's got to be moved up. You know, I, I said it before, Wes, and just getting off schedule. Now you got a second and 13. It's just you're two good defenses, and it's just made for tough sledding tonight. Peyton Wilson, by the way, with a dozen tackles in the ballgame, Tim. Here's Van Dyke now looking to his right. And is he going to run with it? He's going to throw it away as he got to the out-of-bounds line toward Don Chaney. Peyton Wilson was tracking Tyler Van Dyke. 
I think this is the right decision. It's a move a pocket play. They try to get outside and just tell me where you're going with the football. Smith's covered, you know, and then backside. It's not even working. No one really working for the quarterback. And it's a good job of coverage by NC State. So here's Miami, two of ten on third down. And they've missed their last eight chances. Van Dyke to throw. With time, back across the middle and almost intercepted by Peyton Wilson. <laughs> well, Van Dyke does a nice job of holding on to the football, just rushing three. He's got good pass protection. And I think he loses Peyton Wilson behind the official. See, number 11 is on the hash mark. Van Dyke's working right. When he comes back to the left, I think he loses him behind the umpire. And he's fortunate that that wasn't picked off because that was not all that different than last week. I know it was tipped last week, but Peyton Wilson with the interception run back for a score. And you can tell Peyton Wilson knows I should have caught that. Miami now with four three and outs, including two in a row. Joyce will punt it away, sidewinding toward Coit, made the fair catch call right around the 41. A little bit of a juggle. Nonetheless, we'll pack near midfield on a 46-yard punt. Don't forget in Raleigh tonight, we shut it down with the ACC huddle. Kelsey Riggs with E.J. Manuel, Eric McClain, Coach Rick, Eddie Royal. Full recap of the day in the conference, all the highlights, interviews, and much more. The ACC huddle culminates our coverage tonight on ACC Network and always available for you on the ESPN app. That is some, and that's all he is, is a football player, Tim. Well, it is, he's I mean, a frustrated football player hmm. after dropping that one. Wolfpack off their 40. Delbert Mims in the backfield. Play fake by Morris. Loads and will shoot it downfield and overthrows the intended receiver, Terrell Timmons Jr. That's really well covered by Miami. Off of the play action, the North Carolina State is trying to work a post with a deep cross, and Miami just doesn't fall for it. And mentioned some of the reserve corners in the game for Miami. They do a good job there. So second in the full 10. That's Mims coming back to join Morris. That's Concepcion trying to make something happen and going nowhere because grabbing him is Jacob Lichtenstein, the transfer from Southern California. Well, Lichtenstein is just not blocked. Kind of run this little touch pass, and you have Lichtenstein standing right there. That can't be a good feeling for the 187-pound KC Concepcion. They have big number 55 standing right there to greet you. In his seventh year of college football, he enrolled at USC as a freshman in 2017. Did Lichtenstein. Raphael in the backfield, third and 13 for the pack. Mars the throw and overshoots Porter Rooks. And another three and out. That is the sixth possession of the second half between both schools. We've had five three and outs and one missed field goal for Miami. We're seeing two good defenses. So I want to just get that out of the way. Be clear about that. Two good defenses. But offensively, it's a struggle. Sometimes it's been because of penalties. You know, plays like that. Sometimes it's just you got to make the throw. Now, I, I said it watching the last punt. I just feel like something else needs to happen, Wes. A, a, a gadget, a gimmick, something to spark you offensively. Well, Restrepo going to give it a shot here at the 20 and brought down at the 25. That's Keon Lassane making the tackle on the puck cover unit for the Wolfpack of NC State. So Miami will go from its 25 and let's check some of the action in the day. Sam Hartman back in friendly confines and there's Barrett or Jeremiah Trotter with the pick six for the Clemson Tigers, who, by the way, Tim, did not have a penalty in the game for the first time since 1952 today. That's a remarkable stat, especially against a good opponent. And 
It's a big win after a rough loss a week ago for Clemson. Ball at the 25 for Miami. Van Dyke and Fletcher steps through two tackles, busts through another, and has a first down on a 13-yard run. Robert Kennedy, the nickel, makes the play for the Wolfpack. But how about Fletcher's quickness before he ever even gets to the line of scrimmage? Got unblocked defenders in his face, but at 6'2", 225, shows a little shiftiness. 18 carries, 107 yards tonight for Fletcher. Van Dyke from the 38. Quick throw to the left side and caught Colby Young near another first down at the 48. Shaheen battled the stop for the Wolfpack. It'll be second and one. That's a play that Miami has gone back to a few times where you, know, you work the isolation backside on a call run. It's an RPO. They run an inside zone to the right, but they have the ability to throw a slant backside and you know, would not be surprised to see that formation and then maybe some type of double move because they've run it a few times already where Young's able to get inside and catch the football. Second and short, Fletcher the carry. He will get the first down. Not quite to midfield as we go to the final minute of the third. And Mark Fletcher Jr. On that 225-pound frame, the freshman from American Heritage High School has kind of sparked the Miami run game tonight. We've seen Cheney, we've seen Parrish. A.J. Allen not able to go tonight for Coach Cristobal. First and ten. Quick throw on the perimeter. Colby Young got a block. He'll pick up ten, make it 12 inside the 40 to the NC State 38. Devon Betty finally made the stop. Pretty nicely drawn play by Shannon Dawson for 13. Well, it's formation into the boundary of the fourth quarter this year. Van Dyke, play fake. Shoots it, caught, Restrepo. First down, Miami to the Wolfpack 25. It's a really good play by Tyler Van Dyke because it's another RPO, run pass option. Does not give the ball to the back, but he finds himself under pressure right away. And making this throw as he's escaping to his right is not easy. Running to his right, barely has a grip on the football, and that's right to the face mask of Xavier Restrepo. Restrepo, second in the ACC at better than seven catches a game. It's his first tonight. Canes have two tight ends again. Fletcher, the single back. Van Dyke drops to throw again. Dumps it. Near side, Riley Williams, the tight end, pulled down at the 24 by Jalen Scott. These linebackers for NC State do such a good job of tackling in space. Cover so much ground, and Jalen Scott said it earlier. Tony Gibson described him as the most underrated defensive player. So much attention to Peyton Wilson, rightfully so. Jalen Scott, another good linebacker for this Wolfpack defense. 52nd collegiate game tonight for Scott out of Shelby, North Carolina. Second and nine. Pistol for Van Dyke. And the ball to Fletcher. And another tackle made at the line. And that was Robert Kennedy. Tim, Tony Gibson's bringing the support system from in the secondary. Well, I mean, he is. And he started off the football game this way where he's bringing a lot of pressure and trusting his corners to play man coverage without help. They've been successful throughout the night. Here is third down and eight for Van Dyke in Miami. And now Dave Dorn takes a timeout. We'll take a break in Raleigh as well. Still a four-point state lead. Well, Mario Cristobal is two and two in the ACC, six and two overall. Canes are bowl eligible. Xavier Restrepo, one of the ACC's best receivers, just got his first catch a moment ago. They're in plus territory against an NC State defense 
that has been hard to move on. In fact, Miami's missed their last nine third downs and out of a door and timeout. The Wolfpack's got Miami at third and eight, but in plus territory. Van Dyke, quick throw. This is Jacoby George. It'll be a first down. And there's the third down conversion to the Wolfpack 12. Wes, again, one of these wide receiver screens, these tunnel screens. But Shannon Dawson just is not afraid to call. And this one's not even into pressure. But it's a good job of the offensive lineman getting down the field. It's a good job of Jacoby George getting north and south. George comes out of the ball game after picking up the third down. Ball at the 12 now of the Wolfpack. Fletcher back in the ball game with Van Dyke. They'll hand it to the freshman. And he got hit right at the line. And that's Bishop Fitzgerald. Another safety. Breaking things down in the box for NC State. And the way Fitzgerald hits this downhill, he's going to come from the right side of the screen and boom, right there on Fletcher. And Fletcher's tough to take down, but that's at the line of scrimmage really from your strong safety. I, and I, when I see that, that to me means you're going to have to at some point have some type of hard play action if the safeties are going to react that aggressively. Two tight ends, and you see Restrepo and Young to the left. And Restrepo pointing at something here for Van Dyke. They're going to hand to Fletcher. And he tries to keep fighting and does toward the seven. Great second and third effort from Mark Fletcher Jr. Just ahead of third down. To me, as we see Restrepo, like he's the guy for me. Just the, the ability to work inside, the ability to, to beat somebody in man coverage, because he just does a good job of leaning on you and getting out, getting outside. And I would be surprised if Tony Gibson does not bring pressure because he's done it so many times so far in this game in this area. Restrepo and Young to the top. Van Dyke to throw. Looking left. Now pressure. Up in the pocket, back inside, that's Fletcher. And is he going to be short of the first down? I think so. Peyton Wilson made a hit on Mark Fletcher that stacked him up, I think, shy, and it'll be fourth and less than a yard. And Miami's going for it. And I just have, to, like, I understand analytics say go for it. They may get it here. I just think. North Carolina State's done nothing offensively. They keep going three and out, three and out, three and out. Look, two field goals end up winning the football game with a lot of time left. I'm somewhat surprised, and I'm definitely surprised you get in the shotgun. I've addressed this before. You need six inches. You're snapping the football five yards behind it. I got as many tight ends on the roster in the game, and now a timeout has been called. Did Miami let the play clock expire here? Mario ran down and took a timeout. Yep. So Miami has called the timeout. Now, Tim, given the track record of Miami this year, now not just Georgia Tech, but other instances with scoring and the way games temperament goes and things like this, do they change direction here and kick a field goal? Well, we've seen them do that when they were getting ready to take a field goal and then they ended up going for it. I just think North Carolina State's done nothing on offense in the second half, right. nothing. And so when I see that in a four-point game and I can kick a field goal with a really good kicker down in tight and think, look, I might be able to take the lead my next possession by kicking a field goal. I, I just think the flow of the game here has mattered quite a bit. The strength of North Carolina State is their defense, and it's their front. So I think running the football, look, you need to get a yard. You may get it. I understand analytics say are saying to go for it, but... I would kick it. And NC State has five yards of total offense in the second half right now. I just think you have to consider that. MJ Moore has been hit a good amount. Seems like he's gotten up slow a few times. Like that to me is going to impact my decision, and that's why I would kick it. Miami is five for nine on fourth down in the regular season. And the Canes. And it's going to be new and noisy in that end zone, side of the end zone. The student section right there. 
Getting off on the snap is going to be important for Miami. Colby Young is the wide receiver. He's to the left. Everybody else up on that line is tight ends and then Fletcher the back. And here's the give to Fletcher. And he got knocked down. And I don't believe he got it. He did not break the three. Jerry Magalanis may want to look at it. No, he awards it to NC State. Twelve plays for the Canes. They give it away on downs. The strength of the pack is the front. They shut the door on Miami. Back to Raleigh in a moment. Made by Jane Scott. You see Cam McCormick's supposed to block Scott here. Scott's just going to dart inside, and then Shaheen Battle is going to knife in from up top. And that's it right there. And there's really no cutback because Caden Fordham was coming through the weak side A gap. You see him there. And... So I think Battle gets credit for the tackle most likely, but it's Jalen Scott who really made the play. Stayed off its three now, leading by four. High snap, Mims gets the carry, and nothing. Maybe a step. And that play by Jalen Scott, see him kind of talking it over with his buddies on the defensive side of the ball. So obviously it's a huge play, but it doesn't get you out of trouble if you're NC State backed up here inside your own five-yard line, and you've been anemic offensively in the second half, just five yards. Yep, still 5-2 because it's second and 10. Concepcion's been awfully quiet here in the second half. Now he'll take the direct snap. Morris checks out. Here goes KC trying to find a seam. He'll get across the five to the six. They double the number. And it'll be third and seven. Tackle made by Maui Noah. Kiko, the linebacker, older brother of the two for Miami. And here comes Brennan Armstrong with MJ Morris and Concepcion. What's Robert and I got in his bag now? Well, and I think when you have Armstrong on the field, at least there's a little mystery with where the football might end up. There's Armstrong. Morris is coming back to the formation in motion. Kendrick Raphael is with him. Snap to Morris. Well, in terms of what MJ Morris has been able to practice, but he's able to deliver a very big moment in this football game. NC State now. First and 10 out of its 22. Going to hand the ball. Raphael trying to get to the perimeter, wading through the traffic, and he'll pick up maybe four on the play. Corey Flagg, the linebacker, banged him out. You know, Wes, with all the, you know, just the movement with Concepcion and, and Armstrong and Morris, I think it's made it difficult for... Miami to say, all right, well, hey, we're doubling Concepcion. Right. Because he's really the only one that's done anything offensively for NC State. But with all the movement, I don't know how you orchestrate a double with all, you know, with the quarterback motioning out of the backfield. Michael Allen in the game now. That's Concepcion in the orbit. Going to hand to Allen, looking for a crease, and got to the 30. It'll be third down and short maybe two for the first down Allen that spun around ball came out and belt and fell on it the Saint the linebacker the play for Miami but was he down first yeah, yes he was, he was down. down yep so it's two full for the first down for the Wolfpack Reuben Bain goes out here on third and short for Miami I'm not sure we've seen Armstrong throw the football yet. We've seen a lot of quarterback design runs. We would not be surprised with man coverage across the board to see Brennan Armstrong actually put this in the air. Here is Armstrong coming to his left. He'll turn the corner, first down, and then Williams will take him down. I think he had a horse collar, and he did. Pulled him down by the back of his jersey at the 45, and they're going to add 15 to that. On the first down run by Brennan Armstrong. 
Well, NC State just goes speed option, which is a good call with Brennan Armstrong. With man across the board, basically the quarterback will account for. It's a personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense number 20. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run, first down. speed option and Williams who's laid a couple of big hits you know, grabbing inside the back and, and yanking down you know it's kind of different than a typical horse caller usually the horse, horse caller is bringing the guy immediately down but still grabbing back inside the shoulder pads and slinging him down is certainly going to draw the flag first and ten the penalty moves the ball to Miami 40 here's Morris looking to throw on the perimeter Concepcion Knocked out of bounds after a gain of almost eight on first down. Devontae Brown playing for the injured Daryl Porter makes the play. And for the first time in the second half, the Wolf Pack a little rhythm on offense. And all of a sudden, Trent Penix comes running into the order. Did NC State sneak one in on Miami here formationally? Three receivers. There's a look at Penix. Raphael, the running back. They're going to hand it to Raphael. First down and more. Took a big hit from Williams. He bounces off and scores. You mentioned Penix coming into the game. He comes in, does a great job of blocking on that run to the left, and then it's James Williams. He's had a few big hits tonight. It doesn't wrap up, and as he doesn't wrap up, he's able to bounce off some tacklers, and Raphael finds his way into the end zone. 31-yard run, Kendrick Raphael's first touchdown as a wolf back. Point is good. Lead is 11. It's the longest run of the day. It's only the fifth running play for NC State all season over 20 yards. And Kendrick Raphael from Naples, Florida puts the wolf pack up 11. With the wolf pack, 31 yards has put NC State in front 11 with five minutes to play. Smith to kick it away. And Smith will bring this out. Richard Smith looking for an alley and quickly moving across the 30. And he will get to the 40. Richard Smith, who leads the ACC in the country and kick return yardage at almost 33 a game. Gives Miami great field position. Don't forget, coming up after the game, the ACC huddle live here tonight from Carter Finley Stadium. Full recap of all the day's action in Week 10, highlights, and much, much more with Kelsey and the gang. Follows our coverage here tonight at Carter Finley. 41 yard line for Tyler Van Dyke in Miami, who trail 11 now. You see the details of Van Dyke's night. Second quarter interception to Aiden White. Fletcher in the backfield. He's having a career night with 115 yards. And Dyke wants to throw. And incomplete. Toward Jacoby George. He did throw it four. Did. And, and Tyler Van Dyke in Miami, they're, they're trying to run one of these fake go screens and then sneak one of the blockers up the field. Well, Tony Gibson timed his call perfectly because he played coverage, wasn't there. So Van Dyke came off the throw down the field, tried to get it to George, just wasn't able to get enough on it. Second and 10 for the Canes. So the Wolf back with three on the line. They'll bring just the three. Van Dyke goes down. I'm not sure anybody in red got to him. He might have gotten tripped up with his center, Matt Lee, here. 
And just a bit of a statue back there. You know, rush three once again. A lot of coverage. Looking at Restrepo, then looking at the in cut, and maybe gets stepped on. And that could have been Cooper, I guess, 73. Maybe Lee, 55. Hard to tell. Wolfpack was closing the wall, though. Van Dyke straight drop again. Now in trouble. Flush to his left. Van gives chase. He will sail it down the field and out of bounds. And Miami off its own 41 following the Smith kick return has to make a decision here. You think about this, it's just no one open. NC State playing coverage now. Where are you going with the football? And I think Mario Cristobal just making the decision that is the only way to get two possessions is to go for the go for it right now. Yep. So here is fourth down and 18. Van Dyke got to get rid of it, shoots it down the field, it's intercepted. Picked off by Devin Boykin. from Miami, second interception from Tyler Van Dyke. Wolfpack with a great return on the Boykin pick, his second of the year. Back after this. There's the turnover bone, and Devin Boykin will write his name on it for the second straight week. He had a pick last week against Clemson, and he might have sealed it tonight for the Wolfpack, and Xavier Restrepo, tough night at the yard, Hope. Three targets, one catch, Tim, for 13 yards. And just last couple of weeks, just not able to get him as involved as he typically would like to. Here's Brennan Armstrong with the inverted wishbone, and he'll tuck it away and drive inside the 10 to the 9. A gain of about six on first down for Armstrong. You know, Wes, you said it earlier. I mean, how about this job Dave Dorn's done when you look at a disappointing loss at Duke. Scored yeah. just three points. He made a quarterback change. Things were kind of a struggle offensively. I think Brennan Armstrong responded in a way that Dave Dorn was really proud of yeah. in terms of the leadership and just the way he handled it. Now Brennan Armstrong, a big part of the game plan tonight. What looks like, you know, two wins in a row against two really good teams in the conference. Going to keep it again to the left. Inside the five, he'll be taken down around the two. It'll be first and goal for the Wolfpack. You know, Tim, it, coaches are, we got a little bit of uh, pushing, shoving, and maybe a little more than that on the back end of this. And We've had the, the emotions have been on full tilt all night here, to be honest. Both teams know how big this 60 minutes of football is going to be tonight to the rest of the regular season. For sure, and I think if I'm Dave Dorn, I maybe try to get my crew over to have a conversation with them. You know, so that something silly doesn't happen where you, know, you maybe aren't available to play in a game down the line. Yep. So the Wolfpack will huddle here with Armstrong and Morris together. You mentioned the bye week after the Duke game. They made the change, what, prior with the Marshall game. Marshall game, yeah. Yeah, then didn't go well at Duke. Then the bye week. And then they come back and they've beaten Clemson. And now they're on the verge of, and there's a timeout taken with 2.13 to play. And now NC State is on the doorstep of picking up their fourth win in their last six games. And against Miami, this would be the first win against the Canes in 15 years. Russell Wilson, two touchdowns, passing. NC State gets bowl eligible. 
and the Wolfpack beat Miami 38-28. Miami, because they weren't in the same division, the two didn't meet very often. Miami had won four straight in eight of their last ten, if you go all the way back to the Canes' first visit to Raleigh. And that day was a game that Russell Wilson and NC State got bowl eligible, and they beat a Miami team by ten points. Miami had never lost recently in Raleigh since then. They've been 4-0, including a 44-41 win here a couple of years ago. Now on first and goal, look at Armstrong sneak under center. Little option to the open side of the field, and Brennan Armstrong got turned back. They'll blow the whistle at the one. And still, there goes Belton, and there's a flag. Is that going to be on both of them, I think? Offsetting, perhaps. We saw Belton reach in the, against Richard, I think, the safety, who was on the field. And Jerry Magalenas with 159 to go, sorting it out. The reality of this situation is a two score game. Obviously, Miami has two timeouts, but where this football is and the fact that it's going to be a first down, I believe, because of a personal foul, I think that we're going to get on Miami. I do think it's important, I said it a second ago, for both these coaches to, to get their players to understand this game has nearly been decided. You don't want to do something that'll keep you out of next week's contest. After the play, they're all setting unsportsmanlike conduct fouls. Number 52, NC State, number 81, Miami. He's the first of the game. Those fouls will offset the down counts, second down. Come on. The game clock will start on my signal. So NC State essentially here can let Magdalena's toot the whistle and run 25 off, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. he should. Yep. And then if you're Mario Cristobal, you should be ready to take one of your timeouts. And Dave Doran is trying to get the clock started here. The, the clock should be running. It was a run. There was offsetting penalties. The right. clock should run. And Jerry Magalanis was getting everything restored. Now what are we doing? Is Miami going to call the timeout? We still have not started the clock. And now we do. But the game clock has not moved. The, the, the game clock the game, should be running. It right, was a the, running play, offsetting clock, yeah. penalties. The clock should run. Referee blows his whistle in the play. Right. Snap to Morris. Hand inside. This is Mims digging toward the one. Miami trying to rip it out of there. Play is whistled dead and still more pushing and shoving going on. There's a Mario Cristobal timeout. So Mims doesn't get in. It's third and goal. Might have given a step back. So Miami's burned their second timeout. So Mar Mario Cristobal with one timeout to go, under two to play, an 11 point game. And the Wolfpack defense set the tone from the start tonight. And Jalen Scott is our headliner of that unit tonight, Tim. Listen, he's been all over the place. We saw the pe pass break up, a couple tackles for loss, pressures on the quarterback, and then obviously the fourth and one play down on the goal line, which really just changed the momentum of this football game. They make that stop and then go 97 yards for the score that changed the way this game felt. And, you know, I said it earlier because Tony Gibson wanted to give him some credit. Jalen Scott, the most underrated player in their defense this season. Honey Baked Ham, 
playmaker of the game tonight for the Wolfpack, Jalen Scott. Here's third and goal now out of the Miami timeout. That's Concepcion. Here's Morris right back up the middle. And he will be stacked up. And there the whistle blows. Now they're going to mark him shy of the goal line. There will not be a touchdown for MJ Morris. Now in Noah. Led the Miami charge. There's the last crystal ball timeout with 96 seconds left. And the crowd doesn't like it, but there definitely was a whistle. Yep. Is it for the forward progress was stopped? Listen in. several seconds before Morris were to cross the goal line. Listen, Denver. I think it was the right thing to blow the whistle there, especially with how chippy things have gotten after the whistle. He was, you know, the quarterback has stood up, forward progress stopped. The whistle being blown is the right thing to protect the player in that situation. So Narvison was on the field to try the field goal, or on the field, I think, to kick the field goal. And Braden is still out there, the transfer from Western Kentucky, who is converted tonight from 39. And now with 100 seconds to go in this 18th meeting all time between the Canes and the Wolfpack, he can push this to a 14-point lead. And the game clock was not started after the unsportsmanlike penalties offset, and here's a 19-yard field goal. And Braden Narvison fires it right through there with 137 to play. So Miami gets a little more time on the house than maybe they should have, but NC State gets the three points, and now it's a two-touchdown difference. Two-touchdown difference. Miami's used their timeouts, and so... We saw Rashard Smith have a good return last time. They would need another good return. Obviously, a quick score, onside kick, and an opportunity to get the ball in the end zone again. It's unlikely, but certainly still alive. Yep. So 19 yards on the field goal for Narvison, who's two for two tonight, and is now 11 of 13 on the season and had the school record 57-yarder to the game, Tim, you mentioned a moment ago, the only three points they scored on that Saturday night in Durham. Well, NC State will be in Winston-Salem next Saturday to see a Wake Forest team that, speaking of field goals, lost at the Horn the other night to Duke on a Todd Polino kick. And Miami is in Tallahassee next Saturday to see Florida State, who played without Johnny Wilson and Keon Coleman today. But the Knowles won 24-7 over Pittsburgh. And here's Brashard Smith off the kick. He will bring it out. Smith works to the near side, gets past the 20, and then Fordham is going to take him down shy of the 25-yard line. And Miami will go from there. Florida State, by the way, in the win, 24 unanswered points on Pittsburgh. And the Knowles have earned their spot in Charlotte at the ACC championship game a month from tonight in the Queen City. If you're Miami here, Wes, trying to get big chunks, you know, short throws aren't going to do you any good in this scenario. Needed two possessions, and you need to work the sideline. You're about the end of the world if something's in the middle of the field, but you better pick up the first down if the ball's thrown in the middle of the field. Van Dyke. Looking to throw. And this is Cheney. And he'll be taken down by Wilson at the 29, and the clock rolls. Yeah, you'd rather an incompletion over that. And Cheney's got to, got to get out of bounds. Now it's just taking too long. And if you're NC State, you're playing this 10 coverage. You see three defenders extremely deep. Don't let anything behind you. Here is Van Dyke. Another fire here to the near side. Cheney out of bounds at the 30. It'll be third down and five for the Hurricanes. Clock stops with a minute two. 
Mario Cristobal, whose team might lose their third straight ACC road game tonight. While on the Wolfpack sideline, Dave Doran's going to write his name at the top of the list with a Wolfpack win. Van Dyke looking middle of the field with time now. He'll scramble upfield and down at the 38 yard line. That'll be enough for the first down. Travali Price was the guy in there. And NC State's going to make a couple changes. They'll get Van off the field, Hippler, a couple of others. Fresh set of guys to rush the quarterback here. Van Dyke again steps up in the pocket downfield. That's caught Restrepo near the 44 of NC State with 36 seconds left. Miami out of timeouts. Clock will stop and they set the chains. And away we go. You know, and NC State just decided to stay in this rush three, give them time, keep things in front of you. It's a good, it's a good plan, and just going to run out of time. Considering you need two possessions, in fact, if you keep doing that, you know Miami's going to end up probably only ended up running one more play. Four seconds left. Van Dyke downfield intercepted. With one second to go in the game, the ball is picked off. We got a flag thrown on the interception by Brandon Cisse. And now the coaches are having to come from either bench. And Miami and NC State have been pretty heated almost from the start tonight. And Jerry Magalenas winds the clock for the final second, and this ball game is over. NC State pulls away on a Kendrick Raphael touchdown. NC State's.